Hello and welcome back to another video. In this problem, we're given that we have some second degree polynomial, P. So P of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. That's what it means to be a second degree polynomial. The highest exponent is a two. And in this case, a, b, and c are just placeholder. They're just some constants. They can be anything. But we know that P of two is equal to five. The derivative of p at 2 is equal to 3, and the second derivative at 2 is equal to 2. So what does that tell us about this function? Well, we can actually find the derivative of p of x in its current form. We're still not going to know a, b, or c, but we can still just keep those as placeholder constants and calculate the derivative. The first derivative, looking at this form, we have a times the exponent, since we have a power function, times x to the 2 minus 1, subtracting 1 from the exponent to give you a new exponent. We have bx to the first power, so you take the coefficient, we bring it out in front, multiply it by the exponent, and then your new exponent is the old one, minus 1. Derivative of a constant is 0, so plus 0, which gives us the derivative of x is equal to 2a, x to the 2 minus 1 is x to the first power, which is just x, plus b, b times 1 is b, times x to the 1 minus 1 is x to the 0. x to the 0, anything to the 0th power is just 1, so this is b times 1, which is just b. Now, we still need to find the second derivative, since that's going to come up later. Luckily, that's just taking the derivative of the derivative we have. In this case, we know have a power function. The coefficient is 2a. Bring down the 1 2 times x to the 1 minus 1, subtracting 1 from your old variable. And again, the derivative of a constant is 0, so plus 0. So the second derivative is equal to 2a times 1 is 2a times x to the 1 minus 1 is 1, just like with there. So that just cancels out, and we just have 2a. So this is our p. This is the derivative of p. This is the second derivative of p. Plugging that in to these, we know that p of 2 is 5, therefore we know 5 is equal to a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. We can do this by just plugging in 5 for 2, 5 for y, and 2 for x. 5 is equal to 2 squared is 4a plus 2 times b is 2b plus c. For the derivative, we know that p prime of 2 is equal to 3, so for 3 is equal to 2ax, which is 2, plus b. So 3 is equal to 2 times 2 is 4a plus b. The second derivative at 2 is equal to 2, so that we know 2 is equal to 2a. So now we have three equations with three variables, and we can solve for them. Start with this one, looks the most simple, what did you say? If two is equal to two a, we can just solve for a by dividing both sides by two. These will cancel, and we get a is equal to one. And again, we're solving for a, b, and c, because then we'll have our full form of p, which is what we're looking for. We know what a is, we can plug that into this equation and solve for b. So we get three is equal to four times a, which is one plus b. Three is equal to four plus b, Subtract by 4 on both sides, you get negative 1 is equal to b. Finally, we can go back into the first equation, since we know a and b now, and we can solve for c. So we get 5 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. 5 is equal to 4 times a, we know is 1, plus 2b, we know is negative 1, plus c. 5 is equal to 4 plus 2 times negative 1 is minus 2 plus c. 5 is equal to 2 plus c up here. 5 is equal to 2 plus c, just rewriting it so we don't run out of space. We get 3 is equal to c. So we know a, we know b, we know c. We can plug them into the original form of p to give us our second degree polynomial. So p of x is equal to ax squared, so 1x squared, so just x squared, plus bx would be minus 1x, so minus x, plus c, would be plus three, and that is the solution. As always, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.